and uh, just give me one moment I am just uh, taking the chart in the okay so we are good to go okay so uh, today I am going to discuss about the SAP HANA demo okay before I am going to start the SAP HANA demo okay let me brief about myself okay so my name is Jagan and I am working as a SAP BA and a HANA senior consultant and uh, I did the certifications in the SAP BW 7.3 and uh, HANA SP8 so it, we can go for a 142 and when it comes to the highest education I have completed my master of computer applications and when it comes to the skills uh, I have been worked in the SAP warehouse, SAP HANA and SAP business objects as well along with that one I have a SQL expertise as well and when it comes to the non-SAP reporting tool I have experience in the Tableau as well and uh, when it comes to the domain expert, I'm good at the sales, finance and the banking modules and uh, when it comes to the sales, uh, so that is my course, so where I have been implementing the products in uh, SAP BW and uh, SAP HANA as well. And uh, now we are going to start the about. Okay. Uh, sorry guys, I just had one chart window with one of the organization and uh, let's start with the course topics. Okay, the course has been uh, divided into totally six parts. Uh, in the first part, we are going to discuss about uh, SAP HANA introduction and uh, basic SQL which we need uh, to show up the data and to perform the minimum operations uh, on top of SAP HANA. And once we are done with the basic SQL and SAP HANA introduction, we are going to discuss about the data provisioning techniques. Okay, in the data provisioning techniques, we are going to discuss about the how we can uh, get the data into SAP HANA using a different types of extraction tools. So in here, we are going to discuss about uh, SAP BODS. That is a uh, one type of tool uh, where we can perform a data transformation, data cleansing, and text data processing. So using the SAP BODS, uh, we can extract the data and we can transform the data by applying the different types of business rules to achieve the final output. So that is a one type of extraction tool. And when it comes to the second type of uh, tool is SAP SLT. So basically this tool has been introduced by the SAP, which will allow you to extract the real-time data both from SAP and the non-SAP systems. In here, uh, it will support a different types of uh, SAP systems as well as the non-SAP system. And uh, it, you know, it will do a real-time streaming between your SAW system to 
your uh, SAP HANA target system. So any entered post in, in the SOW system will be copied immediately to SAP HANA system. So that will be provide a deep analysis of your data when you are having the real-time feed. Okay, so once we get the data, we need to build a different types of models. So as part of the different types of models, so we are going to discuss all the models that is available in SAP HANA. Okay, so that models can be div divided into a different types of like a graphical user interface modeling and the second one is the SQL interface modeling. Okay, as part of the graphical interface modeling, we are going to discuss about the attribute view, analytical view, calculation views. And as part of the SQL view, so we are going to discuss about the SQL. And uh, when it comes to the decision tables and analytical privilege, uh, as part of the both, uh, we can build in the graphical user interface and we can build using the SQL as well. Okay, that is the information models part. And uh, when it comes to the SAP HANA SQL, we know right, HANA is a both, uh, it will support both OLTP operations as well as the OLAP operations. So when you want to do OLAP and OLTP, you have to execute uh, some type of uh, database commands which system can understand. So in here, uh, SAP HANA can be interacted with the three types of language. Either you can go for a SQL, either you can go for R language, or either go for the L language. In here, uh, we are going to discuss about the SQL. So where we are going to discuss about the procedures, how to write different types of procedures like a PLSQL statements in Oracle and how it will give advantage in SAP HANA to achieve the things. And the second part will be the CE functions. So basically the CE functions uh, has been introduced by the SAP and uh, which will be useful for you to maximize the performance when you are working with the core tables. Okay, so it, it is a kind of SQL thing. So we are going to see a different types of examples on the CE functions. Okay, once we are done with the CE functions and everything, then we will move to the SAP HANA user and roles. We know right, security is the major thing when it comes to the SE, any type of uh, IT things. Okay, so in that one, we are going to discuss about how we can create a different types of users like admin users and the development users and the supporting users and what are all the different roles that we can assign to these users, okay? So that is the way you can uh, think about the security. And the same way, uh, we'll let you know how you can configure a, a roles between SAP Vivo system to S your SAP HANA system as well. Because uh, we know, right, uh, the integration between the SAP Vivo to SAP HANA is very tightly when it comes to security. So that is the way we are going to discuss that part as well. So once we are done with the things, now, so what we have built a different types of uh, models in the SAP HANA. Now we have to allow the front end users to do the reporting on that one. So for that one, we are going to discuss about how we can access these information models from a different kind of front end reporting tools like SAP business objects. So in that one, we are going to discuss about how we can expose the HANA models into business objects to you, like uh, calculation views, analytical views, and the SQL code and everything. And along with that one, we are going to discuss about how we can expose these uh, HANA models into SAP Design Studio as well. Because uh, when it comes to Design Studio, it will purely build uh, for, to increase the performance of SAP HANA and the SAP BW only. So that is why we are going to discuss that tool as well. And uh, along with that one, we are going to discuss about the SAP Lumira. When it comes to the SAP Business Objects and uh, SAP Design Studio, which will give access to the users as well as the developers to build the reports. And when it comes to uh, SAP Lumira, it will uh, make the users to build the reports by their own as well as they can access the developer. So why it is so different means? So because uh, the users having so many uh, you know, customizable functions is available in SAP Lumira. And along with that one, now you know one of the uh, tool which is in demand in the market, like in the Tableau. So we're going to discuss about how you can access the models in the Tableau environment as well. Okay, so these are all the uh, high uh, view about SAP HANA course topics. Okay, so if you are good, uh, we are uh, good to start with the SAP HANA introduction part. Okay, now we are discussing with the SAP HANA introduction. Okay, and the agenda of this introduction part will be the like 
how information is explosion in the current world and how why this uh, current world current system is not able to do different types of operations in the current informations okay and uh, what are all the bottlenecks in the current system and uh, how the in memory technology has been uh, overcome these type of uh, bottlenecks in the current system and how efficiently it will work with the existing data either it may be a structural data or either it may be unstructural data as well okay once uh, we have discussed with the bottlenecks and how to overcome the bottlenecks we are going to discuss about sap hana capabilities like uh, what are all the different types of operations that can be done in sap hana and what are all the unique features that is a part of sap hana and the next we are going to discuss about where you can fit the hana system into your existing landscape so we can go for how you can use the sap hana system like you can go for a oltp system or else you can go for a oltp systems to do the real time you know analytics and everything as well as the to enter the real time data into the system after that we are going to discuss about what are all the different types of sap hana versions has been released till now and on which version we are going to train you the people and the final one will be the what are all the different types of roles will perform uh, as part of the like hana development like when you are doing sap hana like uh, when you are doing the infrastructure right so what are all the different roles will perform like from solution architect to developer and we are going to discuss about the sap hana system architecture like uh, how the sap hana system built what are all the different components as part of the system and everything okay let's start with the information explosion okay so when it comes to the information explosion we know right uh, uh, the current digital world have been uh, populating the data using a different kind of things so you the may, the transaction data may be populating using the oltp systems and uh, the analytics data is populating as part of the analytical applications along with that we have a different sources of data we have when we have a different sources of data so first we have to analyze how much volume it is and what is the different variety what is the different types of data is available and what is the growth of the data by considering the these three factors so we are going to discuss about how information is available in the current world okay as part of the recent estimates so the current world having almost 4.4 gigabyte of data so it's almost triple to the terabytes so that is the statistics uh, in the 2013 and when it comes to the 2020 will be the almost you know you don't believe it almost with 20 gigabyte of data which we can, any type of systems at prime cannot handle that many amount of data we know right by as part of the organization we don't need to uh, uh, you know dig up the whole data which is available in the internet so we need to know what our products and what all the different types of things we have to do in the it okay and uh, when it comes to the like uh, what is the different how much data is available and uh, these are the statistics about that particular one and when it comes to the variety of data so we have a different types of data like uh, which is data from crm mobile and the real time streaming uh, which may be a, you know satellite which may be a mobile which may be a, a, like an application or which may be a, like satellite or a application which has been installed in your desktop or if a, a mechanical device which has been fit in your uh, truck or lorry to know the real time how it is moving and everything okay and uh, the when it comes to velocity as per the statistics okay they are saying that for every 18 months the data is getting doubled so that means that previous in 2013 if it is a 4.4 gigabyte so it is a in 2014 it will be the 8.8 gigabyte so that is the database growth it is okay and when you having all this type of uh, data with you so what are all the problems that you will face okay so if you want to i mean that before we are going to discuss the problems first we have to discuss what are all the expectations from the things the first one will be the to make the decisions in the real time and to reduce the risk okay so how the real time decisions uh, make uh, high profits and reduce the risk suppose you are having a sales i mean that you are having the plant where you are producing i mean that where you are producing your different types of materials and uh, immediately a sales order has been cancelled which is almost one ton so immediately you want to i mean that uh, the customer 
did some operations and immediately the sales department has to know so why the sales order has been cancelled so immediately they need to get alert so how you can do such type of thing means so whenever the sales order has been created you need to run a report so when you want to run a report you need to have the real time data okay so until unless having the real time data it is not possible if you don't have any real time data with you so it will take a day to get the alert and after one day if you are going to reach the customers you know it's a out of the conditions and when you are having the real time data with you so always immediately you can contact with the customer and you can know so what is the problem is that the problem with the material is that the problem with the quality is that the problem with the financial things is that the problem with the bidding so you came to know that what is the exact situation over there so based upon that one you can take a different types of decisions and the second one will be the whenever you are doing a business right you have to uh, get the personal experience when you are doing business okay when i want to do a sales order okay immediately what you have to do so you have to you can uh, create a, you can uh, access you can create a sales order immediately from your mobile so that type of business experience you are expecting and the same way when you want to do uh, analytics you don't need to go for your system and open the desktop then get the things i don't need such type of experience so immediately on the mobile on the fly i have to get so this sales order has been cancelled so get track on that one so like that way this is the personal experience they are expecting from you and the third one will be the instant questions and instant answers so like that way suppose if i increase my market i if if, if i increase the my market growth immediately like uh, the investments i am putting in the market so what is the my risk and how it will give the profit so if you want to do this type of thing you have to run your existing all the things so for the past 10 years or 20 years how the market is going so when the market is very high when the market is very up when you release a new product into the market how the response is so from different types of feeds you have to analyze the data like on the twitter it may be a facebook or any social networking site so you have to get the data from that type of systems and you have to analyze the data you know that the data which is in the twitter and everything will be the unstructured how you can convert this unstructured data into a structural format means you have to use a different types of etl tools like in the bods where a python script will like the good and it will get the data from the sites and you can convert this unstructured data into structural format to do your analysis and the the one which you are maintaining right it needs to be very cost effective management so to achieve these things right we know hana is expensive but how it will make a cost exp, a cost effective management data suppose let us assume it you have a 1 tb of data with you okay which you have been stored in a hard disk okay when you want to store a hard disk in a 1 tb of data data you have to think about the operation cost you have to think about the maintenance cost and you have to think about the license cost and everything so when you mix all this thing over a period of time right it will be same cost with it compared to sap hana because you don't need to buy 1 tb of hana system to store a 1 tb of data because the hana system will store the data in a columnar format so that is a why the data which is 1 tb in a row based system will be compressed to 70% so that may be come to a 400 mb in the hana system so that is the difference it will make uh, how means suppose you are uh, you are not ready to investment your things in the uh, in i mean that uh, in sap hana system you can go for the cloud management where you can rent the hana system for a particular time period and you can check that how efficient it is storing the data and how we efficient it is uh, doing your analysis so once you are good to go then you can get the system into your on premise so that is a on premise then cloud in integration and everything will comes to the picture over there now we are going to discuss about what are all the bottlenecks in the system okay so the bottlenecks in the system right this is the past architecture when it comes to any type of sap uh, sap systems and non sap system irrespective of an it system it will be the hardware okay so we know right the first bottlenecks we already aware of the things will be the extraction the data from the disk so that will be the very expensive because uh, we know right the memory main memory and cache is uh, and cpu is a very high cost so that is the why we always store the data in a disk because the main memory and the cpu everything is a vault so when you are storing the disk and when you want to access the disk it will take a time to access all your 1 terabyte data 
So that is where the first bottleneck you are seeing in any type of the system. Of course, we have a different types of algorithms and everything. Still, any type of algorithm and everything has to be depend upon the disk reading speed only. Okay, even it is a multiple access and everything. The second bottleneck you are seeing is till the disk is arrived, okay, the main memory and the core CPU cache, everything needs to be in the ideal stage. Okay, so once the data is extracted to the main memory, it has to transform the data between the main memory to the CPU cache, where it will take a lot, uh, I mean that uh, good time when it comes to the compare to the data transfer between your disk to main memory. So that is the second bottleneck you are seeing because of, so every one CPU cache will be interacted with the one memory main module. But in, if you see the future architecture, okay, so there is a multi-core architecture. So you can see a multiple CPUs can be handled into a single motherboard which will make a parallel processing to speed up the data and a different types of operating systems. Now we have a 64 bit operating system which will support almost a 2 TB of RAM memory at a single point of second which can 100 GB of, 100 GB of uh, speed. And we know right when it comes to the SAP HANA it can be a single, I mean that a single node can be 12 terabyte of data. So that is the current hardware has been changed. And when it comes to the memory, so still uh, most of the systems using the existing memory, I mean that you are always storing the data in the main memory in the row based tables only. But when it comes to the future technologies, so what is the future technology? The main memory needs to be stored both in the row based and the column based to do operations both on the OLTP systems as well as the analytical systems under the
muted. Efficient when you are reading the data and uh, Delta. Now uh, we are going to see the compression. Okay, these are all the parts. So we are going to discuss it one by one. So where it has been, uh, how it has been overcome, the existing bottlenecks and everything. So the first one will be the memory computing. How it is doing the memory computing. So the first one we have to do in here is the previous one, where all the data is storing in a disk, and the disk data can be accessed into a memory. So previously the main memory having very limited. That is why the data volume of the growth is very high and the memory growth is memory management is very low. So that is why when you are seeing over here, right? So the data has been condensed and only the respective data will be loaded into memory and CPU will do the operations. But when it comes to the SAP HANA, what it will do is it is almost equivalent to your disk because right now you don't have any limitations with the memory. You know, right? We can almost access the 12 TB of memory we can put into single SAP HANA system. And you can do a parallel like 12 TB plus 12 TB plus 12 TB. Like that way, you can go for that one. And the minimum SAP HANA system RAM will start with 64 GB only. So that is why what SAP has been done. Instead of storing all your data into the disk, you can store all your data into the RAM itself. So you don't need to go for the disk every time whenever you require a data. But why they still keep the disk? Because we know, right, the RAM is a volatile. So that is why whenever you do a power loss, so automatically you will lose the data, which is a part of in the memory. So that is why what they have done is they have maintained an efficient synchronization between your memory and your disk. So that means that whenever there is a transaction happened at the memory level, like in setting is happened in here, immediately it will be synced and it will be stored in the disk as well. So whenever there is a power failure, when is, there is a hardware failure and everything, you don't need to bother about, about data. So when, I, when HANA is restarting, automatically it will read the data from your disk and it will keep all the data in your memory itself. So where in memory, we'll store a different types of operations like a column store, partitioning, compression, and a parallel processing of your data between a CPU and memory. So that is the way HANA is more efficient. Now we are going to discuss about how the column store, how the partitioning, how the compression is happening, and what is insert only and delta. Okay. So the first one will be the column store. You see the in here, right? So basically when it comes to row store, how it will store the data. So the way you are seeing a row, right? The same way it will write the data into a, a, in a disk as well. So when you, in a real time, when you want to access the date and time, so based upon particular date, so which customer has been bought how much quantity, okay? So by the time, what it will do is, the row store will read all this entire line. So that is why when you want to access a terabytes of data, it will take very high time to access the data. But when it comes to the column store, what it will do is, so instead of accessing all your alphanumeric data, for every alphanumeric data, it will create a unique index, okay? So that indexes will be stored into the main memory, and these are all the part of your index tables. So whenever you are accessing the things, what it will do is immediately it will check the respective indexes, and the respective indexes will be look up into the index table, and it will get the data. So that is why uh, the column-based uh, so, I mean that the column-based table is more efficient when it comes to the row-based table because it will not search all entire row. So it will search, so for, for that particular date, how, what, how much quantity that has been done means it will look up only date under the quantity bond. It won't look up the material and customer. Where in a row-based table, they will look up. And previously, what are all the disadvantages of column databases? When you want to insert a new data, suppose uh, there is a, a product called uh, a DOB, okay? So that needs to be inserted in here, like uh, because uh, the way it will do index will be the sequential. So that is why it has to insert between the two and three. So when it has to insert between the two and three, what it has to do, it has to rearrange the index table and it has to rearrange the original table. So that is where it will take more time 
in a previous technologies. So what SAP has been does is instead of doing these kind of things like uh, do, uh, doing a re-index and everything, they have inserted a concept called insert only and delta, and that insert only or delta is a uh, matched with the concept called merging and they have overcome this option i mean to say so previously it will be more expensive and that more expensive statement has been decreased to the like how we, you can insert the data into a row table will be equivalent to inserting a data into column based table as well okay so when you are inserting a data in a column based table or when you are reading a data in a column based table how it will work Okay, so previously these are all assumptions. So when it comes to aggregation tables, okay, so for every type of row based table, we have to build aggregates because it's very difficult to read all your transactions and to do the aggregation. So that is why you have to do build a different types of aggregation tables and everything. Uh, but when it comes to the a column based table, you know you don't need to build any type of aggregations because the column based tables will be more efficient when it comes to the accessing the data. So when it comes to new values, so whenever you are inserting your new values into the row-based table, it will it will take very less time to insert it. But previously, it will take very high volume of time to insert the data. So that has been overcome to, into SAP HANA. That is why either you are using the row-based table or else either you are using a column-based table, it will no, make any difference. So both will work on the same way. And previously the practice is you will work row based tables only for the OLTP purposes like ERP systems and the real time transaction data inserting and everything. But when it comes to the column base, you are going to use in the OLAP processor. But right now you can use a single column based table both for the OLTP operations as well as the OLAP operations. That is why you can use SAP HANA for SAP BW where you can do a OLAP operations and for SAP ERP where you are inserting a real time data. Okay. So when it comes to the SAP HANA, how it will uh, access the column based table means, so here it is a Y. So if you are seeing a data, right, it will be inserted in tuple wise. So this all the data will be stored in a tuple. This all the data will be stored in a tuple. But when it comes to the column based table, how it will store means, all these values will be first written to memory. Once these values has been completed, the next column will be start. So that is why you don't need to read all the data to read a, only two columns of your table. So it will directly jump into index for this column one. Once it is done, then it will directly jump into the column three. Okay. If you are having a parallel processing, so both column one and column three can be accessed at the same time. So that is why it is more optimized on a existing hardware and it is more compressible because you don't need to store. Suppose if you observe over here, right, the radio has been inserted two times. So in a column, in a row based table, you have to insert radio and radio. So that means that a eight letters you have to insert. But when it comes to the column based table, you don't need to insert the eight letters. We have given an index in here and that index can be inserted in here and here. So how, many, how much data it is occupying? So it is occupying six, seven, eight. Means for a less number of entries, it will take the same. But when you are having the hundred entries, so it will occupy eight hundred one. But when it comes to in here, it won't occupy 800. So a 100 index will take 100 plus 8. So only 108 memory it is required. Where in the row based table, you require almost 800. So that is the difference how a column store will make a better compression with the row based tables. And the second one will be the partitioning. So we know, right, SAP HANA can be, you know, large out. So it can store a multiple types of hardware which can be linked together to partition the data. So that is why if you have a table which is having the four columns and the table having almost one million records. So what you can do is every column you can store a different types of nodes where it is a different types of hardware. Okay, and all can be linked with the master node. Okay, so whenever you are requesting a data, one core will work with one type of column. So that is why all four cores with work with the four types of columns which will reduce the amount of time it will take to access the data and which will increase the performance. So that is why when it comes to the partitioning it has been efficiently maintained in a different types of when you are having the multi-node architecture in your system. When it comes to single node also you don't need to worry about because we have a multiple CPUs and can be sit on the single node which can 
parallelly access your memory. So that is the second advantage, even you have a single node as well. So previously we don't have this option. Why? Because of means because we have to get the data from the disk. So that is a way the main memory and the CPU will sit idle. But right now I have all the data in memory and it won't take much time to push the data between your memory to your CPU. And the third one will be the insert only on delta. So how it will be means suppose I have a transaction happening with respect to one material. Okay. So when you are inserting a data previously what you are going to do is you are going to directly insert into main storage. So that is why it will take more time to rearrange the index and everything. So to overcome this option what SAP has been done is whenever you are inserting any type of new row they are going to assign a transaction ID for you. Okay. So assume it first you have loaded the data into the SAP HANA. So that time what it will do is it will store all your data into a main storage. Okay. From that time onwards, whenever you are loading the data, it will sit into a delta storage. Suppose in here, all this data from 1 to 58 has been stored into delta storage. Okay, and whenever a new record has been inserted, it will be uh, given a new transaction ID that is 79 in here, and it will be inserted into delta storage. So how many rows for this particular material is? There are four rows. But when you are reading the operation, right? What it will do is it will get the latest transaction ID only with respect to that material. That means that only it will pick 79 only instead of picking all these old entries. So that is a where you are overcoming the existing one because you are inserting in here delta storage which is having the very less number of records only. Okay. So once over a period of time what will be happen the delta storage also will increase a lot of memory. So that is why what they have done is they have implemented one concept called dog. Okay. That we can as a snap dog. So what that snap dog will do is it will always scan your tables throughout the entire SAP HANA system and whenever the delta storage has been come to one particular memory level. So what it will do is it will do a merge operation. That means that it will insert all these records into a main storage by the time it will consider only the latest record. So what is the latest record in here? Only the 79. So that 79 will be inserted into a main storage and all the remaining records will be uh, removed from the main memory. So that means that delta storage will again come to normal. This is the way how it has been overcome the insert operation which is most expensive in the column table. So that is the concept of insert only on delta. Okay. Now we are going to discuss about the how you can use the SAP HANA system into your existing both SAP landscape infrastructure and the non-SAP landscape infrastructure as well. The first one where SAP HANA can be set into SAP one is accelerators. So because we know right when SAP HANA has been introduced in the market it has to prove itself that it will be work fine with the SAP systems as well because that is where their market the primary market is there. So what they have done is they have introduced a concept called accelerators. So if you are back having a background about SAP ERP, so there are some in the, there are some line of business like controlling and the financialing and uh, material ledger. These are all the most expensive. I mean that uh, when it comes to some type of reports, right? That type of reports will take a lot of time to execute into the SAP ERP. So. Uh, like a general ledger so which, which where you have to do the account re receivables and account payables and you have to do so many operations that is the way it will take a more time and the second one is the controlling so you have to get the data from the sales and distribution material management and you have to do the controlling so that is the most ex second most expensive so what they have done is they have invented a concept called accelerators so in the accelerator what you can do is there is a sequential of steps you have to perform in your existing SAP ERP system to attach the SAP HANA as a secondary database. So what exactly the secondary database will do? So whenever you do any type of real time business that will be first written into your traditional databases like Oracle SQL, MS SQL or Teradata or something. Once the data has been written to your traditional database, a real-time streaming can be done using the SAP SLT like 
system landscape architecture is a one type of extraction tool for real time data okay then the data move to sap hana database okay after that whenever you are executing a set of reports okay that reports will hit the sap hana database instead of hitting the traditional database so that is a why that report will take where in previous it will take a 6 minutes can be taken less than 30 seconds when you are executing the sap hana accelerators so that is a way they have proved the things at the initial stage so once they have proved the initial stage what they have done is they can make the hana database as a primary database itself okay that can be done for all the existing applications like SAP BW powered HANA, SAP CRM powered HANA, BPC powered HANA, APPO powered HANA and everything. So for that one, initially they have started with the BW powered HANA where you can make the SAP HANA as a primary database as well. There is no need to set up your traditional database. Okay, remove your traditional database and use your SAP HANA database as a primary database so that it will store all your data over there. Okay. From there you can access the data like you do with normal things. Along with that one, you can build some information in your SAP HANA database where that can be directly accessed using the, your application. Okay, so that may be SAP BW or SAP BPC and everything. So this is the way how you can fit your SAP HANA system into your existing SAP landscape. When it comes to the non-SAP thing, so what you can do? Okay, suppose I have a SAP HANA system which I can back and I have an Oracle system or a SQL system where I am seeing a worse performance for some type of tables and everything. So that what you can do is you can push all your data real time into your SAP HANA system and you can build a different types of information models which will apply your business rules on the existing data and you can do a reporting. So the reporting can be done using a BA tools like a click view, tableau and everything. Okay, that is the one type of uh, thing you can use the SAP HANA that we call as a data mart and the second one we can use is a applications so you don't suppose I'm new to the IT and I don't want to go for existing system what you can do is you can simply buy your SAP HANA system and you can build a native SAP HTML5 application on top of SAP HANA and how these HTML work means in SAP HANA we have a concept called extra small engine that we call as a SAP access engine where it can convert your SAP uh, sorry where it can convert your into SAP HTML5 language and JavaScript language into system understandable language and it will retrieve the data and it will showcase into the front end so you don't need to go for uh, building applications directly you can build a web based HTML based file applications okay so that is a way where you can use the SAP HANA as a applications as well and uh, these are all the different types of uh, HANA versions we have in the market and in the current we are going to discuss about the SP9 so where uh, the current one which has been released in the last uh, quarter of the last year okay and we are going to try now on this one as well and these are all the different types of release dates uh, but different types of SAP HANA versions and uh, in the market you can find SAP HANA versions which will start with the 5 only because all the previous versions has been archived okay and uh, these are the different types of roles you will perform as part of the SAP HANA development so here development means uh, fitting of the system into your landscape as well okay so as part of the solution ArcNet so what you can do is you have to do hardware sizing and architecture suppose I have an existing SAP BW or existing Oracle system so how much memory I required as part of the HANA so how you know how because the SAP HANA will store the data in compression okay by doing the compression it will lose the data so how you know because a 1 TB of BW system don't need a 1 TB of HANA memory so for that one what they have done is okay they have simply a given a different types of uh, SQL scripts if it is a existing database like uh, for Oracle they will provide one script for you for BW they will provide a program for uh, all SAP applications they will give a report for you for all non SAP applications they are going different types of SQL statement once you execute that particular SQL statement it will analyze all your existing data then it will come up with uh, what is the minimum memory you required okay 
based upon that analytics you can go for how much hardware size you required and everything okay and when it comes to the architecture like uh, how you want to use sap hana like a data mart or a primary database of your existing systems or a, a secondary database for your existing systems as well and a different types of components like do you want to go for ui5 or you want to go for a bods you want to install a sap slt server or you want to go for a, a different types of components as part of sap hana okay and when it comes to the developer we are all well know so how you get the business requirement using the functional spec and how you are going to convert the functional specs into the technical spec and how you can achieve the technical spec using a different types of modeling like the graphical modeling and a, a sql modeling as well so these are all the part of developer and when it comes to the so third one is application support so basically the application support can handled by the basis person or can a separate person as well if it is a basis person they have idea about how to uh, perform the slt operations how the data is loading and everything how the system is performing what is the expensive sql statements how to assign a memory to the particular uh, user and uh, how you can prioritize the users and everything and when it comes to the second one you can do a system monitoring like how the data is loading is there any delay between the data loading into sap hana system is there any job failure happen so all this will be part of your sap hana application support okay so this is the just a brief introduction about sap hana so if you have any queries you can shoot it now